How are you all feeling? Come on, guys, give me some. There we go. This is the last talk of Startup Grind 2016. As they say, save the best for last. And here we are. Our last speaker of this conference, when he was starting, he did not know much about technology. He studied political science. Today, he is one of the most influential tech investors in US history. Having invested in over 650 uh, startups and companies, he was the second uh, round investor in Google. He invested in PayPal. He was an early investor in Pinterest, Airbnb, BuzzFeed, you name it. He is going to come and share his knowledge today. So please, get up on your feet and give it up for Ron Conway. Good. Far side, far side. Thanks for coming, Steve. Hey, thank you. Well, welcome to Startup Grind. Is that a standing ovation for no, you? it's not for me, trust me. Good for you. Um, thanks for being here. I've never here. had a standing ovation, didn't say anything. <laughs> what do they Let's usually, just keep quiet. What do they usually say when they stand for you? And, Loud. It's never happened before. They're usually scream they're screaming usually, right? They're, run, run. No, no screaming. <laughs> We're not this isn't Hollywood. <laughs> um, thank you for being here. Pleasure. Closing out the, the show for us. We really appreciate it. Um, lots to talk about. We're gonna get started. Um, you bet. We're 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 primarily here to talk about immigration and um, would love to 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 go through an array of different things. Very relevant topic, lots going on uh, at the moment. What, uh, what would you like to see changed in the immigration system? Let's just start um, right there. Well, before I do that, yeah, sure, go can, for I, it. can I tell you how I got uh, passionate about immigration that reform? That would be great. Um, uh, I've always cared about immigration reform, but there was a catalyzing event on a Sunday afternoon when Mark Zuckerberg called me. It was like 2 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, like in the month of May, it was sunny and beautiful out. And he goes, hey, Ron, this is Mark. And I go, I said to myself, it's Sunday at 2 o'clock. What the hell are you calling me for? Does he call you a lot? I mean, is this uh, a regular no, thing? No, he does not okay. call me so a lot. Now, I've, I've known Mark since right. he's 19. You were an early in investor. Early investor, and, and I, I, I like to, f to think that I helped Facebook a lot. Hey, you in opened the early a lot days. of doors for him in the early days. In, in the early days right. is when SV Angel really gets involved. So I was like, no, I'm not doing anything. What, what have you got? We were on the phone for over an hour. Huh. And he said, hey, I'm really concerned about immigration. Hmm. And uh, I said, tell me about it. And uh, he was doing volunteer work across the street from Facebook's headquarters. In fact, when Facebook moved to Menlo Park from, from Palo Alto, the big campus, I sent Mark and everyone at Facebook an email saying, your closest physical neighbor at your new Menlo Park office is the Boys and Girls Club of Menlo Park. How cool is that? It's not a house, it's not a restaurant, it's a place that does good work for kids. You know, your whole campus has good karma already. Sure enough, Mark never told me this, but he went over there as a volunteer. Hmm. And he was teaching the kids after school. And one day at the end of class, he said, hey, r raise your hand uh, if you're going to college. And then everyone go around and tell me what college you're going to. A bunch of the kids didn't raise their hands. Mm. And he goes, this is crazy. So he, he cornered them after and said, why, why didn't you raise your hand? And these kids all said, because we're illegal immigrants. Mm. We can't go to college. And that, that struck Mark more than anything. And that's why Mark and Forward.us, he was calling me to say, I'm founding this organization. We have to do something about this. Uh, and I immediately said, I am all in. Uh, you know, the founders of, yeah. co-founders of Forward.us made, you know, large donations. And, right, a lot of people did. And got it off the ground. And, but it's such a cool story on how it got started. It didn't get started because tech companies want visas. Mm -hmm. Forward.us got started because Mark Zuckerberg 
knows these kids. He still knows these kids and, and gets together with them. Um, because Mark said, my God, it's not fair for you not to be allowed to go to college in America. Yeah. Sorry for that. But no, that's a great story. That's how that's it cool. started. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you. Do you think... Do so you, if Mark Zuckerberg calls you on a Sunday afternoon, let him talk. Up. Yeah, don't put him to voicemail. Let him talk. Do you think, do you think he's been... I mean, uh, you'd have more visibility into this than us. Uh, has he been pleased with the results? Is he satisfied with where we're at? Are, are you satisfied with, with the change that, that, that you've been able to, to make? Absolutely not. We're actually dissatisfied, restless, uh, frustrated, but not deterred. And that's why Ford.us right now has a whole ground campaign going on across the country. What is that? And uh, we're bu basically building up organic support mm -hmm. f from the grassroots so that when we start to lobby again actively in Washington, we'll have an army of support. So Mark Zuckerberg is, is not a quitter. Yeah. And so Ford.us has been running in kind of kind of in stealth mode. Right. Well, come come but, back to stealth mode but, really. But right? building the army. Yeah. Building the army, getting getting ready. It kind of seems like one of these things almost like a big product launch where it really came out huge and there were so many people involved like the list of people involved in Ford values is it's insane. And then um, you know, it seems like some things work, some things didn't work and almost like, hey, let's they kind of just trying to figure it out, learn how to, it's kind of navigate these tech guys, navigating Washington, navigating the legal system, navigating, you know, s some, some very difficult, complicated issues, right? Yeah, and well, we got it passed in the Senate, but, but not the House. Yeah. Uh, Lorene Powell Jobs is hugely involved in this issue, uh, and we dovetail yeah. all, of, all of our efforts. Great, well, so what should we, what, should we, what change do you want to see, what uh, should we see? Well, it, you know, this issue, nothing has been done about immigration reform for a quarter of a century, yeah. which is kind of terrifying. But in the comprehensive immigration reform that, that we want to propose, hopefully next year when there's a new president and a new Congress, um, you know, we need startup visas for, for entrepreneurs. Uh, we want to staple a green card to every immigrant who who graduates from a U.S. college. Uh, we want to raise, thank you. Uh, we want to raise the H-1B uh, uh, cap, and we need a pathway of citizenship for the 11 million uh, immigrants who are in America today. Remember, everyone in America are immigrants. I wish we could all march very to pro, Washington right very now. Very pro-immigration crowd. Yes. It's good. Um, what, how does this affect America in the future, and how is it currently affecting us? Uh, well, well, right now it's, it's negatively impacting us because the, the, the people who graduate from college are having to go back to their mother country and the immigrants who stay here uh, help create additional jobs. You know, for every engineer uh, that is hired, there's another three support staff in a company. And so none of those people are, are getting hired either. It's fascinating that 28% that of all the new startups in America are started by immigrants. Tech startups. Tech startups. Yeah. And that's versus 13% of immigrants in the, in the population. So it's disproportionate. Immigrants are great founders. Yeah. It's just a fact of life. Sergey Brin uh, at, at Google. Right. Uh, you know, many, many examples. It's, it seems like um, the, the conversation, uh, has, there's a lot of conversation about um, really, you know, this, this very educated class, this almost this, you know, who are these people that are gonna contribute massive value? And it seems like originally, as you said, we're all immigrants. When our ancestors came to Ellis Island or wherever they came, you know, it was really about almost the rejected, the, the poor, the people who 
had no place in their home countries. Do, is there, should, should immigration reform be for you know, the, the most educated group for, this one, for, for startups? Should it be for everyone? How, how, do, you, how do you look at well, those two? Well, the 11 million immigrants that are here. Yeah, sure, uh, across have, the board. Have to have, so across the board, have to have a pathway to citizenship. And then the, the immigrants who are educated here, we're crazy to send them away. You know, we, we educated them. Um, America has a demand for like uh, 30,000 engineers a year, mm. and our schools only produce like 9,000, some, something in that range. And so that shows how, how catastrophic the need is uh, for America to be a leader in innovation, we have to keep keep these great minds in our country. Tell us about some of the problems you've seen uh, with our system when you, as you've supported startups, as you've seen, you know, some of the the dozens and dozens of companies that you've helped, hundreds of companies. Yeah, the the real tragedy is when a, when the CEO, and this has happened like five times, one of our CEOs says, uh, "I have to leave the country tonight." Uh, because my visa has expired, uh, I had hoped I had hoped to get a permanent visa, but I didn't. And we have CEOs who can't even stay in the country with the rest of their team. That's the most catastrophic case, and yeah. that's when I really go to town with with certain U.S. senators who who actually help us out. Yeah. Uh, and and go work these issues. What do you make of all the Trump and you know this kind of anti-immigrant rhetoric, rhetoric out there? Are you a fence or a, a wall guy? Do you have an opinion there? Am I a what? A fence or a wall guy? Oh no, I am not a fence or a wall guy. Neither. Um, neither. The borders look just fine to me. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I, 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 I think Trump, you know, obviously has it all wrong. But he's he's winning, you know. I think I think the American population is really frustrated with Washington D.C. and the fact that that the two extremists, Trump and Cruz or Bernie, Bernie Sanders. See, I don't even remember his name because he's a socialist. Um, <laughs> who, who we should a, add you and Tim Draper. Socialist <laughs> in the White House. We should add you and Tim Draper speaking together. This you guys, is, uh, oh, really yeah. He had a great. <laughs> no, but this is, you know, America. Right. It, America is about capitalism. Right. Look at the great companies that the tech industry is building. Bernie right. Sanders is not going to help that. But it shows the frustration with Washington right now that the two extremists would be making any progress whatsoever. All the progress. Yeah, it's crazy. It does make me want to say Mike Bloomberg to the rescue. Put your hat in. No, put your hat in. No, we need Ron you. Conway for no, president. Thank you. I I'm, I'm an advocate, not a not a. Oh, you got clout. We already got you uh, like 20 uh, votes. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, I, I'm intrigued by Michael Bloomberg. He's in the right spot on gun safety, and he's definitely in the right spot on on immigration reform, and he's a capitalist. Well, this is, seems what's happening in Washington. Everyone is digging, digging, digging in their heels, and it's like who can who can go deeper? Who can go deeper? And so. You've got these, and, and then none of these people will work together. It's just, it's, it is incredibly frustrating. Yeah, there's, there's got to be some cooperation. It's frustrating to me on gun safety. I went to D.C. for a week uh, two years ago, and I hadn't been to D.C. in like 15 years. And I left D.C. and I said, I, I think I'm in favor of term limits. Yeah. The problem is that's a... Uh, uh, my God, is it a change to the Constitution? It's something really hard. Every state has to vote on it. Yeah. Uh, but but I, yeah, if somebody's got to shake up D.C. Right. Now maybe the fact that Trump and Sanders are the candidates will maybe shake up D.C. Maybe that'll finally wake, wake well, people up. Well, they'll say our behavior's been so bad. Right. This is how frustrated people right. are. Well, and and this hap but this happens. It seems like now it's happening every every two to six years where the whole place gets turned over and whole different group comes in and the same things happen each time. Um, what, uh, Steve Case, the founder of AOL, uh, has said that 50 years ago all the smartest people in America were, became, went into politics. 
But today, the smartest people are all going into startups, and I don't know where that leaves the politicians, but uh, it... Well, let's, let's hope that some of our great founders uh, do have political aspirations, because nothing would be better for this country if, if entrepreneurs someday would, uh, would go into politics. I haven't found too many yet, but, but I'm hoping it happens. I think the frustration level is there. How, how can people get involved? How can, they, uh, well, let's how can they be part of this? Start by, how many people here, I, I can't see, but how many people here are registered to vote? I, I think I'm pretty shocked. I mean, There's everyone- There's probably a lot of non-Americans, non-US citizens oh, in here okay. too, I would guess. So how many non-US? So, Okay, so that explains it. I feel better. I feel better. But we need immigration If you reform. can figure that out, I mean, so, yeah, maybe so, that's the problem. If we can so, get our friends in Malaysia to vote, we yeah. should be fine. <laughs> uh, so number one, register to vote. And then yeah. I, have a, I have a URL here. What um, if I don't like any of the candidates? Can I, do I still vote? What would you do? Because I'm kind of feeling like that might be my situation. Well, hey, the conventions haven't happened yet, so let's okay. hope. All right, I'll, I'll, let's I'll hope be optimistic. the American system. I'll produces, be optimistic for a little bit. Yeah, I'm an eternal optimist. But um, go to forward.us's website for immigration reform, and and sign up for our email list, and that you're an advocate for immigration reform. Forward.us, and then we have a website called builtbyimmigrants.com that allows you to build a web page about your story of immigration. So there's three things. R register to vote and vote, that is four things. Uh, register on the forward.us website and tell your story on builtbyimmigrants.com. There's four things you can do. Great. Um, I'd love to ask you a couple of questions um, about angel investing. You, 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 are like the, you are the godfather of this industry, you, you really pioneered the entire industry. Um, it seems like everyone today is, maybe just in the, the world I'm in, but so many people are, are angel investors, you know? And, and it feels to me like it's just this thing you can kind of throw out and, oh, I put a little, it, does it, is, is this a good thing that, that it's kind of, we've now got all these people that are, that are angel investing and who knows where they came from and what they're doing and what advice, like what advice do you even, ha like do you even have good advice? I mean, is, is well, it a positive thing or a negative thing? Well, I think it's a positive thing. Uh, I think it's a positive thing because I have a belief that if anyone has the courage to start a company, I started two, yeah. it is not easy. But I believe if, if everyone who has the courage to start a company I would hope that they all get funded. And that's just not the case. For every uh, entrepreneur out there, there's probably one in 20 that gets funded. Yeah. So if more of them can get funded and we have even more innovation occurring in the United States, that's a good thing. Yeah. So that tells me I do like a lot of new angels coming in because more companies get funded uh, and, and America continues to innovate. Now. The warning to the founders is be discerning about who your investors are. Try and go after the investors who add the most value, who know other VCs, so that when you go from your seed round to your VC round, they can help introduce you to VCs because you want a third party intro to venture capitalists. Um, and, and an angel who's willing to open up their relationship network for your company, and an investor who has domain expertise in the field that your company is right. in. Right. So, so the entrepreneurs have to be discerning. You're a founder. This is part of what makes you a special investor, and I, I encourage everyone here to go read or listen to Ron's story. We don't have really time for it today. It's, it's, it's a great story. Um, should, I, should I take advice from non-founders? Um, you know, should, you know, guys that haven't been there, that haven't been in the trenches? Well, if, if that person has domain expertise in the, in the company that you're starting up, yeah. even though they haven't been a founder themselves, I think they could add value. Because in that domain, they probably have a lot of relationships as well. Yeah. So that, that's a case where, where you should accept. 
But they could also be kind of like this whole thing of a Patrick Collison and, and a John Col uh, Collison. They've never even been in payments. They're just, they have this totally new, fresh approach on payments. You know, does, does taking people that have been in the industry that have done it the old way, does that, can that dilute your vision? Does it di potentially dilute your product? No, because the, the, these great founders, they, they don't lose sight of their vision. But getting somebody from Visa or Wells Fargo or American Express uh, interested in your company can, can do nothing but good. One of the first meetings Jack Dorsey ever had at Square is I dragged him up to see the chairman of Visa. And he dragged in his whole, I said it will only take 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, I said to the chairman of Visa, and Jack demonstrated the, the you, slide. You just like, hey, I, we're, I'm gonna, you just, is it like the Zuckerberg thing where you just call him up on a Sunday? How do you know the no, chairman no, this of is Visa? No, no, this is a Friday afternoon. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, but you, I mean, how well, do you know I knew, that? I knew how that do you know that person? I, because I, I make it, I make it my life to build relationships so that I can help founders. Uh, and he wouldn't let Jack leave. He brought up his whole staff. Mm. And it ends up, he had just been lecturing his whole staff about, we have to help small businesses get automated and selfishly get them to, to process transactions on Visa. And when he saw that card swipe, he said, my God, every small business in America can now conduct transactions. Um, and, and Visa, in, Visa, within months, invested in Square, um, and, and a lot. And they, I'm very proud of that transaction. Yeah, it's cool. That's adding well, value. Well, that's value. Oh, yeah, that's, that's adding that's, value. That's, that's solid but, but, value. But believe me, I've taken the Collison brothers in to see. Did the same the, Visa guy? The, no, they needed some. They wanted some help at Wells Fargo, and they got. You know that chairman too. We sure do. We sure do. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing this for 22 hey, years. Well, there's a lot of people who've been doing it for 22 years who don't know the chairman of Wells Fargo. What, <laughs> we talk about software eating the world. Is, is, if Ron Connolly is forced to become software, would, would it be called AngelList or would it be called something else? Uh, that's a good question. It, it, it could be called. Do you think that's? It could be. It, do you look at that and say, you know, wow. AngelList is the, the democratization of, of angel investing. Yeah. But the, but the best deals still don't, they don't come through AngelList, right? Well, and will I, they, hey, it, I don't, I don't want to dis AngelList. No, they're, no, I love Naval. They're in the floor I, above us on Maiden Lane No, 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 I love Naval. I'm not, I don't, I don't mean to disrespectfully. I'm just saying, like, I'm just wondering, like, like the YC companies that come in, or it, air, do you think in the future you're going to find Airbnb or, you know, well, or, or Stripe I, on? I think, you know, there's, I think there's nothing better than face-to-face -face contact with your investors where the entrepreneur gets to ask, where, where the investor gets to ask the entrepreneur about what they're doing, but the entrepreneur asks the investor, how will you be able to help me? Yeah. And, and that needs to be done face to face, eyeball to eyeball, so that the entrepreneur gets a commitment from that investor that, that they're gonna help them with their next round of financing, uh, with with domain expertise and 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 that that angel investor is willing to use their relationship network. There's a lot of angels out there who who I don't know if they're embarrassed. I don't know what it is, yeah. but they're not proud to take their little startup in to see the chairman of Visa or Wells Fargo. And that's I shocking. Love, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense to me. But we but should. We I should love work taking. Closer, I love taking founders in yeah. jeans and t-shirts in to see the chairman yeah, of Wells Fargo. Cool. Takes them a little longer to get in through the lobby. You know, w once I beat the Collins, Collisons up to the executive floor of Wells Fargo and I heard this commotion, I said, what's up? And they go, well, we have this strange guy in the lobby. We're worried about him. I said, that's for sure the co-founder of Stripe. Let him in. Yeah. <laughs> and they, uh, <laughs> they launched a really amazing thing today, I believe. Did you see that? Have you heard about it? I, I don't know if I should say it because... I, I've been in meetings all okay, day. Okay, they, they, are, they are... I'm not going to say because I didn't actually read it. I've just heard about it. And it is going to change the way that startups around the world happen. I, I, uh, anyways, I, I, I don't want to spoil it if good, it hasn't good, been announced. Good so for I'll, them. I'll say it's, yeah, it's amazing. Um, a couple more questions and then, and then we're going to wrap up. Um, you, you're, a, you're an early uh, investor in Zenefits. And I know... I know you, Pat uh, Parker was supposed to be here yesterday, and for obvious reasons, he's not. Um, 
I know you take no joy in, 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 you know, you guys are at the early stage, and then they've moved way beyond this. But the, my question is, is it always seems that when things go wrong, the founder is the one left holding, you know, the ball. And I wonder, um, in this case or other cases, but and then the board or other people, they, you know, it's like, oh, it was all here. But then when the company's successful, it, everybody was part of it. And I wonder, do you think, uh, do you think that's right? Is, is, that a, is that a problem with leadership? If you want to be a leader, you need to be prepared to take the majority of the, of the blame when it's there, and you can share the credit when it's not? Or, or do you think that, you know, that, that everyone should be, you know, that everyone should be part of, part of that? Well, the, the, the CEO of a, co so the founder, or one of the founders becomes the CEO. Yeah. And the CEO is, is the builder of the culture. The biggest contribution a CEO makes is building the culture and soul and lifeblood of the company. Uh, look at the culture of Google, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter. They all have very different cultures. Every one of those cultures comes from the mind of that founder. Um, and th so that's the biggest contribution that a, that a CEO makes. And so that, you know, because the culture is what attracts Talent. certain people to go work at that company. It's the culture. It's when, when you go interview and you say, wow, I've interviewed at four places. I always tell people when you're going to get a new career, interview at four or five places and get a feel for the culture one of them will sing out to you. And it always happens. They say, wow, I interviewed at five great companies. I only want to work at that one. Yeah. Because it, it jives with my culture. Um, so the CEO, the buck stops at the CEO. It's a lot of responsibility. That's why I respect founders so much. This is not easy. And, and do you but it can also be very rewarding. Yeah. L uh we're going to close on this. I've I've heard this story about you when uh, you were first starting out angel investing, and um, that you basically went up and down Sand Hill Road, and that you didn't you didn't necessarily just go to Kleiner or go to Sequoia, but you built and and you are famous for this that you built relationships with everybody in the food chain, so to speak, because uh, as I've heard you say, because Everyone at some point needs follow-on capital. They need funding, and it could be from a, a famous, you know, top tier one. It could be from a tier three. And I just wonder, um, as maybe the, one of the, if not the best relationship person in the Valley, teach us how do we do it? How do we build a network the way you've built it, and how should we think about building and exchanging and adding value to those relationships? Yeah, uh, well, 22 years ago when I started angel investing at the seed stage, I knew that you know after we put in our 50 or 100K in a syndicate that back in those days was no more than a half a million, that one of the next big events for the company would be getting their next round of financing. And whether you like it or not, it's all about the money. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't fulfill your dream if you don't have money to pay the team. So uh, I made it my business to become friends of every VC at the time. It was probably 100 of them. And some people said to me, why the hell do you need to go talk to that unknown VC? Which firm was that? Uh, it, it, could be any, it could be anyone. <laughs> Uh, and I said, because I'm going to have a startup that KP, Sequoia, Benchmark, and Greylock, that they turn down, and I'll be damned if we're going to let that startup go out of business, I'm going to go to, I don't care who the VC is, I'm going to go find a VC who gets what that company's doing and get that company funded, because it's, it's all about the next round of funding. Um, and, and that... I enjoy building relationships. For some people, they have to force themselves to do it. But if you're going to be a good angel investor, you're going to have to build a relationship network. Yeah. And I've seen you do this where even 
who you are today and the, thing, the things you've done. I've seen you at events and other things and, you know, where you have, you've gone out and you sit there and talk and, and you'll talk with anyone because you don't know which relationship is going to be the one that, you know, maybe it's your next investment or maybe it's the next company that gets bought by one of your startups or whatever. And, you know, as we've had, I don't know, we had 100 speakers here the last two days. And wow. I can only count a handful that like really that will really do that, you know. And and so it's a you know I say it's a very Silicon Valley kind of thing, you know, to kind of be open, talk to people, you know, and and always you know take meetings and things like that. And well, it's 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 how you learn. You never ever stop learning. And by meeting new people, I pick up new ideas, new thoughts, new opinions. And it's all, it's all valuable, you know, in, in the learning process that never, ever stops. Ron Conway, SV Angel, thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs>